Mark Oswald, Chief Economist and Global Strategies, ADM Investor Services. Mark, thank you so much for joining us as always. Uh, Mark, so I was wondering, I was just trying to have a very quick recap on what we saw yesterday because it's really important in order to figure out whether this is a satisfying reaction or not in terms of uh, Western countries and NATO reaction. Well, I mean, in, t in terms of what's been applied in the way of sanctions to the banking sector, to trading in, in uh, Russian debt, uh, first of all, you always have to start with this point uh, that uh, Russian debt to GDP is 18 percent. And that's even after rising quite substantially uh, over the past two years due to measures to support the economy through COVID. Um, just as a reminder, the U.S. debt to GDP ratio is 130 percent. They're not very dependent on foreign um, <clears throat> debt. Um, the uh, blocking of trading of Russian government debt. Yeah, so what? They've been through this before. I think the market reaction is is quite telling, and I think it really it, it's it's in, it's um, informed by two things. One, I think there are a lot of people, even though I think the situation is very different, who are looking back at 2014 at Crimea and basically going, well, it didn't really last for very long, um, so this must surely be yet another opportunity to buy the dip. Now, I don't think that's necessarily a safe assumption, but I can understand exactly where it's coming from if you put it in the context of Crimea. Um, <clears throat> in terms of uh, the, the measures which have been announced by uh, Western countries, um, the only really significant one that I can see is the German suspension of the approval process for Nord Stream 2. But it is a suspension. So Germany is basically still um, hoping of itself via diplomacy in the longer run. Um, yeah, it isn't an outright, right, that's the end of that project. Um, <clears throat> as for President, uh, the former President Medvedev's comments, well, you know, <laughs> that's exactly what you would expect at this given point in time. I think that the problem for markets at the moment is really trying to gauge what's happened um, in, in terms of what Mr. Putin plans from here. Now, if you listen to what he said on Monday, it was full of vitriol. Uh, it was full of anger. It sounded, to be honest, like one of my uh, former ancestors, Frederick, Frederick Barbarossa, just like a robber baron. Um, it's a very old playbook. And, uh, you know, it, it's tyrants and despot kings do. Um, so there's nothing, but, you know, we still don't really know what happens to security forces within. Uh, the Donetsk and Luhansk re regions. You know what happens there? Do we? You know, does this go on? And we start to see. You know, Russia tries to manufacture some sort of confrontation with the Ukrainian military forces. In which case, we've got something very, very different on our hands. And obviously, there will be a, a different Western reaction. Um, I don't personally think that Mr. Uh, Putin is interested in a full-on confrontation with NATO, uh, but it does present a very different situation. It would rather. Uh, on the other side, do you expect any kind of impact in terms of energy prices uh, in, in, in the near to medium term? Mostly, of course, when it comes well, to natural gas and crude oil. Yeah, um, you know, I suppose what we're trying to guess at the moment is what is the premium, the geopolitical risk factor premium that we've already got in energy prices, which is quite difficult to gauge. But my guess is we're, we're talking about something like eight to ten dollars on oil um, in terms of natural gas. Well, it's you know I mean you've got such huge divergence going on. Um, you know you've got a lot of commentary coming out of Germany. We can we can do without the Russian natural gas and you know yes in the long run uh, by about 2030, as the German Institute for the World Economy the IW said earlier today. What happened? As if there, there is a cutoff now. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I, I think they're going to remain volatile. Um, we are in a situation in terms of e energy uh, where, fortunately, we've had a light Europe, light um, winter in, in Europe, so gas prices haven't gone through the roof in the way they might have done. Um, <clears throat> um, but the energy crisis in Europe on the gas front is certainly not over. Um, as far as oil goes, it, it, we do have a very big fat premium in there because as much as people assume 
there is plenty more supply to come and it can be brought online. Um, actual physical oil supplies, as far, as far as the world goes, are extraordinarily tight. So some of the, the, you know, a lot of the reason of why we're here is nothing to do with Russia uh, and Ukraine. It has um, everything to do with basically right. a very tight supply outlook and with easing restrictions in many countries across the world, the prospect of a genuine pickup in activity, which will require uh, a lot more usage of uh, oil products. And, and, and final take, since, of course, energy prices are one of the main reasons of um, the inflationary pressures to the upside here, of course, in Europe. Today, we saw once again the numbers. These are uh, the inflation numbers month on month, plus 0.3 percent, perfectly in line with expectations, 5.1 percent. This is already a number that we saw a few uh, days ago. Very quickly, uh, Mark, I was wondering, do you expect inflationary pressures to remain? Sorry to um, persist. Yes, I mean some of the basis. You know, they, 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 they will remain, and I, you know, we've already got the ECB um, pulling further and further back from its dovish t uh, tones, and the pressures are going. The big is going to be on Friday when we get the uh, preliminary date of February from France, and we're already expecting something in the re of it to go from three. three Oh, that front. Um, so those inflationary pressures, um, you know, the supply chain bottlenecks are not going away and we now may actually have the, the additional problem of if we are easing a lot of restrictions and things do return to some semblance of whatever the new normal is, that we're going to have even more demand than we've already had pressurizing uh, energy prices. Thank you very much, Mark Oswald, Chief Economist and Global Strategist, ADM Investor Services. Have a great day and talk to you soon.